Hi, thank you for joining me today. We're reading through A Course in Miracles, the main text, and today we will read chapter 20, The Vision of Holiness, section 8, The Vision of Sinlessness. The Vision of Sinlessness. Vision will come to you in, at first in glimpses, but they will be enough to show you what is given you who see your brother sinless. Truth is restored to you through your desire as it was lost to you through your desire for something else. Open the holy place that you closed off by valuing the something else and what was never lost will return quick, quietly. It has been saved for you. Vision would not be necessary had judgment not been made. Desire now is whole undoing, and it is done for you. Do you not want to know your own identity? Would you not happily exchange your doubts for certainty? Would you not willingly be free of misery and learn again of joy? Your holy relationship offers all this to you. As it was given you, so will be its effects. And as its holy purpose was not made by you, the means by which its happy end is yours is also not of you. Rejoice in what is yours, but for the asking, and think not that you need make either means or end. All this is given you who would but see your brother sinless. All this is given, waiting on your desire but to receive it. Vision is freely given to those who see. Your brother's sinlessness is given you in shining light to look on with the Holy Spirit's vision and to rejoice in along with him. For peace will come to all who ask for it with real desire and sincerity of purpose, shared with the Holy Spirit and at one with him on what salvation is. Be willing then to see your brother sinless, that Christ may rise before your vision and give you joy. And place no value on your bo brother's body, which holds him to illusions of what he is. It is his desire to see his sinlessness as it is yours. And bless the Son of God in your relationship, nor see him in him what you have made of him. The Holy Spirit guarantees that what God willed and gave you shall be yours. This is your purpose now, and the vision that makes it yours is ready to be given. You have the vision that enables me to see the body not. And as you look upon your brother, you will see an altar to your father, holy as heaven, glowing with radiant purity and sparkling with the shining lilies you laid upon it. What can you value more than this? Why do you think the body is a better home, a safer shelter for God's son? Why would you rather look on it than on the earth, truth? How can the engine of destruction be preferred and chosen to replace the holy home the Holy Spirit offers where he will dwell with you? The body is a sign of weakness, vulnerability, and loss of power. Can such a savior help you? Would you turn in your distress and need for help under the, unto the helpless? Is the pitifully little the perfect choice to call upon for strength? Judgment will seem to make your Savior weak. Yet it is you who need his strength. There is no problem, no event or solution. No perplexity that vision will not solve. All is redeemed when looked upon with vision. 
and this is not your sight. For this is not your sight, and brings with it the laws beloved of him whose sight it is. Everything looked upon with vision falls gently into place according to the laws brought to it by his calm and certain sight. The end for everything he looks upon is always sure, for it will meet his purpose, seen in an adjusted form and suited perfectly to meet it. Destructiveness becomes benign and sin is turned to blessing under his gentle gaze. What can the body's eyes perceive with power to correct? Its eyes adjust to sin, unable to overlook it in any form and seeing it everywhere in everything. Look through its eyes and everything will stand condemned before you. All that could save you, you will never see. Your holy relationship, the source of your salvation, will be deprived of meaning and its most holy purpose bereft of means for its accomplishment. Judgment is but a toy, a whim, the senseless means to play the idle game of death in your imagination. But vision sets all things right, bringing them gently within the kindly way, sway of heaven's laws. What if you recognize this world is an, is an hallucination? What if you really understood you made it up? What if you realize that those who seem to walk around in it to sin and die, attack and murder, destroy themselves, are wholly unreal? Could you have faith in what you see if you accepted this? And would you see it? Hallucinations disappear when they are recognized for what they are. This is the healing and the remedy. Believe them not and they are gone. And all you need do is recognize that you did this. Once you accept this simple fact and take unto yourself the power you gave them, you are released from them. One thing is sure, hallucinations serve a purpose. And when that purpose is no longer held, they disappear. Therefore, the question never is whether you want them but always do you want the purpose that they serve. This world seems to hold out many purposes, each different with different values, yet they are all the same. Again, there is no order, only a seeming hierarchy of values. Only two purposes are possible, and one is sin, the other holiness. Nothing is in between, and which you choose determines what you see, for what you see is merely how you elect to meet your goal. Hallucinations serve to meet the goal of madness. They are the means by which the outside world, projected from within, adjusts to sin and seems to witness, and seems to witness to its reality. It still is true that nothing is without, yet upon nothing are all the projections made. For it is the projection that gets the nothing, all the meaning that it holds. What has no meaning cannot be perceived, and meaning always looks within to find itself, and then looks without. All meaning that you give the world outside must thus reflect the sight you saw within, or better, if you saw at all or merely judged against. Vision is the means by which the Holy Spirit translates your nightmares into happy dreams, your wild hallucinations that show you all the fearful outcomes of imagined sin into the calm and reassuring sights with which he would replace them. These gentle sights and sounds are looked upon happily and heard with joy. 
They are his substitutes for all the terrifying sights and screaming sounds the ego's purpose brought to your horrified awareness. They step away from sin, reminding you that it is not reality which frightens you and that the errors which you made can be corrected. When you have looked on what seemed terrifying and seen it change to sights of loveliness and peace, when you have looked upon scenes of violence and death and watched them change to quiet views of gardens under open skies with clear life-giving water running happily beside them in dancing brooks that never waste away, who need persuade you to accept the gift of vision. And after vision, who is there who could refuse what must come after? Think but an instant on this. You can behold the holiness of God gave his son. And never need you think that there is something else for you to see. This is a great section. And of course, it takes us back to uh, all of the teachings uh, originally uh, that we, we started out talking about and that I teach about, uh, which is that everything you see is an illusion, that nothing uh, that we think is solid is solid. Everything is made of the same stuff and it's all moving and it's all in, in fused with spirit that we are divinity in form, that everything we see is divinity in form. Everything we see is a result of our internal mechanisms. So when we look out and we think we're seeing things in this dualistic world that we think exists, come back to this chapter because this chapter is all about what's truly real. So if you have questions, if you'd like additional support, you can reach out to me, 907-351-3003 is the best. Texting is best uh, to start with anyway. You can also message me through Facebook, SoundCloud, YouTube, and through my websites, uh, lindalamp.com and lindalamp.shop. Until our next reading, namaste and much love.